Ladies and gentlemen, now today I've spent far too much time working on this wonderful spreadsheet which talks about my thoughts and opinions on who I believe are some of the best PvP teams to run uh, currently on Global. So we've got a variety of tiers here, we've got the top meta, the three teams that I think are just ridiculous at the moment and you very commonly see in PvP. And then we've got the S tier, which are not quite top meta teams, however really really good and can definitely beat the top meta teams if they have the right RNG or are facing kind of the right top meta team as well because uh, each of these they have their good they have their bad matchups um, but there's a lot of different stuff that you can kind of build and run and then I've got the A tier so these are and in my opinion like a little bit lower than the um uh, the S tier ones, and then finally we got the B tier, which are teams that are kind of like on their way out, or there exists like a, a much better variant, and then finally I've got kind of a few troll teams as well down the bottom, uh, if you're looking to run something that's just, you know, very weird, very alternate, uh, probably doesn't have the highest win ratio, but if you're looking to make a Kabuki video, man, <laughs> this is uh, uh, probably the place to go. Uh, however, let's talk about the top teams, man, the ones if you want to just feel like your big PP flexing, just clapping everybody uh, so I think currently arguably the best team to run is the red Escanor variant of the blue Dean Meliodas and Lilia Pierce team I've played like both of these um uh, set up so much over the last month and a bit and I do think red Escanor especially in the current meta just has a really good matchup in comparison to green Escanor versus the green Escanor teams and also the mono red teams as well and also this team it just doesn't really have like a bad matchup one of the massive strengths about red Escanor is he's like pretty much unkillable for three turns he has an AoE drain as well also Lilia has that so when it gets to a matchup where kind of the deciding factor of who wins that matchup is whoever gets an ultimate off first and that is you know a lot more common since red king is kind of slowing down the meta for a lot of top players on the sub uh he just seems to be rearing ahead a fair bit for me however green Escanor again still really really good to run alongside blue d meliodas and lilia so it's kind of a um a case between the Escanors of personal preference, what you have, uh, which one is like higher alt level as well and has more CC, but there's like no bad Escanor to run, at least in my opinion. Like when Red Escanor was released, I did dismiss this team a little bit, but after playing the Red Escanor variant so much in the last week and a bit, like I really am convinced that that one is ever so slightly better than the green Escanor version. Uh, but again, they're both really, really good. And also on top of that, we have Mono Red. So Mono Red you always need to make sure, and this is a big mistake I see with a lot of mono red players, you have got to have Escanor on the left hand side. Because if you have Escanor on the left hand side, then you've got a 50% chance to merge into pretty much a game winning play, because you're either going to draw um, a second Escanor Amplify card, which will instantly merge and give you a silver, and then you have the play of you can buff up Escanor, you can upgrade Escanor, and you can one shot like whoever you want. Like that gold card is so ridiculously OP with Arthur's buff or you also draw into the play where you get a second uh, Arthur buff card or a second upgrade card and then you can rush gold and then you're just like god tier immortal so red Escanor is just crazy on the mono red team because there's like a 50% chance to um uh, draw into pretty much a game winning play there uh, obviously you're not always gonna win there's a lot of crazy stuff that can happen when you're playing mono red in terms of the rng and draw like it can either be really kind to you or just very very underwhelming uh, but generally when stuff goes right for mono red escanor teams it goes really really right and you just win the match very very quickly so yeah he works really really well in that comp so those are kind of the big three teams that i think you know most people are running at the moment Man, and that are just dominating global PvP because they are a little bit ridiculous. But also in the S tier, we've got teams that have really good win ratios. However, maybe have a weakness to certain draw, um, especially when it comes to some of the top teams. So the first one is the Green Escanor Lilia and also Gotha team. So Gotha's upgrades provide like great synergy with Escanor and also Lilia because you can remove buffs on Escanor. Uh, you can also get easy access to Drain, Alt Rush, um, and also healing and debuff removal so yeah there's just a lot of really really good synergy there as well but it is very reliant on the green escanor in order to um 
uh, get opponents down and deal damage. And if you're facing like mono red or just a really lucky burst comp, uh, that Escanor can die very quickly. And if he does die very quickly, that is your game plan over there. Then next up, we got the double pierce cleave comp of Hauser, Blue D, Meliodas, and also Lilia to make them even more crazy. And this one, for the reason that pierce is just much better in geared, and also Hauser has UR gear, and he kind of needs the pierce on his gear to really get the most out of his damage because he doesn't have enough uh, pierce at the base to really make him like exciting in ungeared PvP. So yeah, this one is much better in geared, uh, but it's a very fun comp and can work really well if you draw into a lot of pierce cards. However, I think having an Escanor for the single target burst and kind of pressure uh, on getting certain opponents down does work better overall in geared scenarios. But again, it's certainly not too bad, man. Still works very nicely if you've heavily invested in Hauser. Then if you've maybe got a little bit lucky on one of the Escanor banners, but do not have Blue Dean Meliodas, you can replace uh, Blue Dean Meli with Hauser for some of the Pierce teams. Again, these aren't going to work um, like as good in ungeared PvP because Hauser really doesn't shine there too much. But also Hauser does buff up Lilia and also Escanor by giving them an 8% increase to their basic stats. Uh, so yeah, that's quite nice. Makes them even better there. But overall, Blue Dean Meli is just better to run in place of Hauser if you do have access to him. But again, works quite nicely in geared scenarios there. Then next up, a comp I would really only recommend for geared PvP as well is uh, Levi Gold Rush. Now, overall, Escanor, I think, is the better character when it comes to... Um uh, mono red gold rush teams however levi is pretty ridiculous man if you give him like crit damage gear this guy hits like a truck like silver cards with gold buffs can pretty much one shot certain opponents and a gold uh, card while he has a gold buff is just ridiculous man levi really has some very very impressive damage on global and the fact that goddess liz is not a character that exists actually means that he is viable for the time being uh it might be viable for kind of a, a few more months at least until we get her added to the game so yeah levi is a very very interesting one actually uh doesn't work as well in ungeared pvp because you really want the crit damage gear to um uh, boost up his crit damage by like a really significant chunk. Uh, however, yeah, very, very impressive in geared, man. Levi just stunned me when I played him in geared. So yeah, pretty solid character. But again, if you got the choice between like Levi or Escanor to invest in, you want to go for the red version of Escanor because he's got more longevity and he's like slightly better in comparison as well. Now, next up, we got Kingbrum. So you can still run Kingbrum if you use health or CC food. And if you go first, you get the right RNG, kind of get the matchup under control control you still got ways to kind of avoid like blue d meliodas's damage and mitigate it and heal back up uh king Brum, nowhere near as dominant as it used to be but it can still work and people are still running it uh but again uh it is behind some of the top pierce teams and if you do run into a um uh, what is it, Escanor, Blue D, Meliodas matchup, and they get to go first, then King Brum, in most scenarios, is getting clapped very, very quickly. So you need to make sure if you're running that comp, you know, you've got a lot of ult levels, you've got a lot of CC, um, and you are ideally going first. Now, next up, we've got, uh, what is it, Green Balm, Blue D, Meliodas Penetration. Slightly alternative uh, setup you can run, uh, viable for both ungeared and also geared PvP, like this in certain matchups, um, if like mono red doesn't get the gold buff or you're fighting a red Escanor or green Escanor variant can work quite nicely. So yeah, this one is not too bad. I would say it's a bit behind running a... Um uh, what is it, Escanor in the place of Barn, but it still works out all right, man. It is a fun one to run if you are a big fan of Green Barn. Now, next up, we've got a couple of Valenti teams, and Valenti teams, they're actually still working decently for a lot of players, because most people, I would say most people running a Blue D Meliodas are going for this variant, and this is the team that I probably run into about 50% of the time playing PvP, is just Green Escanor, Lilia, and also Blue D Meli. And Valenti teams, like, they really, really slow down that team. You can either run Valenti with Gotha um, alongside Lilia or Merlin, but as long as you've got Gil Thunder on the sub and are using... Um 
uh, either CC or resistance food. Resistance food is going to make you a lot more tanky, but also CC food can allow you to go first and kind of get the matchup under a little bit more control. So there are arguments for both, but I think resistance food is, is maybe the way to go in a lot of scenarios there. But yeah, Valenti is working out all right just because you don't see like as much mono red in comparison to Pierce, and Valenti's very good against Pierce. Now, next up, we have a team that I was running the other day, man. I'm just really, really impressed by the performance of Mikasa. We've kind of got like two variants. We've got like Mikasa alongside Blue Dean, Melly, and Lilia, and also the SR free to play Eren alongside Blue Dean, Meliodas, and Lilia. And both of these characters, they do have their. Um, like massive pros. Now if Mikasa can stay alive for about 3-4 turns and really build up her passive and that's actually much easier to do on global than it was on JP because there's so much cleave in the global PvP meta with Blue Dean Meliodas being a thing. So you all need 100% Red King if you do want to run this team. But if you can keep her alive man, she just goes like almost god mode. It really is a bit ridiculous because she gets a 30% increase to all of her substats so she barely takes like any damage. She patiently is like loads of damage as well can tank ults and even in ungeared pvp she had like 150,000 health after firing off her ult um and yeah could just tank like any ult in the game so if mikasa can stay alive for a while uh then she's really really good to run um however she gets burst down quickly it's not too much of a great time and a lot of people haven't really clocked onto the fact that um uh, Mikasa is just so valuable if she's left alive just yet. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with Mikasa, man. I've been running this team just uh, just for enjoyment, and it works really, really well. Uh, we also have SR Erin alongside Blue Team Meliodas and also Lilia. Now, SR Erin works really nicely in a lot of the meta matchups because there's still a fair amount of Gotha and also a little bit of Merlin, but a lot of Gotha knocking about, especially against mono red matchups as well. And SR Erin hits like a truck. Um, uh, but his unique ability gives him 30% more damage to unknown races and go through a Merlin of both unknown races. Uh, so yeah, he works quite well. He's got a lot of damage on the ult. He also has... Um uh, Derriere's buff up an evasion card so that can make him pretty much immune to taking damage outside from alts for a turn so if you kind of line that up at the right time uh, then you can pretty much guarantee that you fire off his ult so yeah he's actually a really decent character for the current global pvp meta I would say overall the Eskinals do work a bit better but he's not too bad he is a pretty impressive character to play and he's certainly not going to feel like dead weight in the majority of matchups so yeah I quite like him uh, and then next up we got the whale alt rush team man this is this is a whale team man this is a massive massive whale team because you need um Ideally, a very high alt level on both Deanne and also King. And the idea behind this team um, is that you've got King to reduce the pierce damage. You just want to rush, ideally, uh, Deanne's ult at the start of the fight. If you go in second, you go for, ideally, both Deanne and also King's ult. And then you just win the game. You also have Melascula. So nobody can die before Melascula dies or else you get her cheat death. So she kind of acts as like a, uh, what is it, a silent taunt. Um, so yeah, it actually works really, really well if the opponent doesn't have access to a lot of alt drain. So if you're fighting, um... Uh, what is it this matchup uh it's gonna work incredibly well but if you're fighting this one and uh, your opponent gets lucky and draws like a second drain for Escanor or lilia and then can control the matchup then it's going to be bad news uh but considering most people are running this one at the moment if you are an absolute megalodon this one is very very fun to run i might do like a, another pvp video on this because i did uh, a video on this with the valenti variant instead of king but king's actually much better than valenti in this comp uh but again it's very whaley man you do need like 660 and so just keep that in mind as well and then finally moving down we have a tier which are i would say viable options not quite as good as maybe um uh, some of the ones above, but they can still work really well uh, with the right RNG. If you're climbing through like, uh, what is it, silver, gold, or master, and you don't have some characters or want to do something a little bit differently, uh, these are maybe teams that you could look at. So you've got the standard like Escanor Alt Rush of King, Gotha, Escanor, and also Merlin on the sub. Again, this has no Red King or no Valenti, so it's very, uh, what is it, it's at the mercy of Pierce teams if you do run into them. Uh, so yeah, got to be a little bit careful of that and then we've got uh what is it basically kind of a gold rush team with green escanor on and instead of king there is hauser on the sub there you'd also run uh what is it red king on the um 
uh, the sub here if you want to. But this is just like my free-to-play team when I didn't have Red King. I still don't have Red King on the free-to-play account. So yeah, this one worked nicely uh, before I had Blue Dean, Meliodas, and also Red Escanor. Uh, then what do we have? We've got a Lilia, Gotha, Merlin, uh, and also Red King on the sub. Slightly more control-focused team there. You will need, ideally, I think it's like Merlin Zolt, uh, a little bit higher just so you can KO with that, but can work out all right. And then we got, what is it, SSR? Titan Air and Alt Rush again to really make this work you do need like at least a 4-6 Titan Erin. it's one of those teams that is a um a little bit impractical sometimes and if you're facing like the double alt drain team at the top here it's just never gonna work uh however you know it, it can work if you're facing like a lot of other teams man i beat this team a fair bit and i beat this team a fair bit using it but i got like a six six titan error and a massive cc there so i wouldn't say it's like the best team out there but it can work man because if you do get titan error into his titan form like he's so stupidly overpowered in that titan form um, though with Arthur's buff, you just like one shot on everything, man. Even with bronze cards, it's really, really good. But you need to get into that Titan form first. And that can be a little bit tricky if there is a... Um uh, what is it? A fair bit of Alt Drain knocking about. Uh, then we've also got a Gold Rush team with Liz Hawk there. Uh, below, we've got Exodia Barn. Now, this is a team I ran into once uh, the other night when I was playing PvP, just on the sofa for a little bit of fun, and it really, really impressed me. Uh, so, I was just playing with my Mikasa team, so I didn't really have a, a way to uh, quickly burst down the Barn, but he kind of held on to all of the Barn cards until he could upgrade a Golden x -Store and like two golden drains as well and then just wombo combo me in a single turn and i was like dude i'm not even mad that was crazy crazy impressive uh so yeah that's a team i want to do a pvp video on at some point because it looks like a um a really really fun time uh but yeah exodia barn i i don't know if it really is gonna work in a lot of matchups because again i think if i was running like the standard escanor team or this one we would have put on so much pressure that it would have been a lot more difficult but with the mikasa team again she needs like a few turns to really get going so we couldn't apply that pressure as much uh, instantly but it was a very very impressive display there and then we've also got what is it green king alt rush with valenti on the front lines again this one one uh, works really really well against this team like it's so much fun in one of the previous metas running um uh, green king alt rush but if you're fighting like uh, a mono red team or if you're fighting like a red escanor hybrid and he's got double drains it's not really going to work out as well there and you also do need king uh, a very high alt level uh but yeah that's pretty much it for all of the the really good really interesting teams again if you want to have a bit of a look at some of the troll teams and slightly lower ranked ones on the tier list which are kind of going a little bit out of the meta uh feel free to at your own leisure but those are my thoughts on some of the best pvp teams on global currently so if you did enjoy today's video please do smash that like button that'd be greatly appreciated uh let me know in the comments section below any teams that are really good that i missed out that i should try out in future videos uh, and also if you believe any team should be ranked slightly higher or lower and what are some of the reasons why that team uh is better or not as good as kind of what we've talked about today so i'm very interested to get a bit of community input on this one uh but yeah if you did enjoy today's pvp tailless video please do smash that like button that'd be greatly appreciated but aside from that thank you very much for watching take care and i hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day